From day one of its creation, the Skywarp ride from Skyline Attractions has intrigued people due to its widely unorthodox design and purpose to defy the norms of theme park rides everywhere. Because of its modern design and designation as a coaster, many have wondered, how does the Skywarp work? In today's ever-growing theme park world, guests flock to their parks of choice to escape the stress of the day. In many cases, parks have grown and expanded, spending millions upon millions of dollars trying to capture the eye of customers, and the demands of guests have certainly grown with them. Each year, park owners demand the latest and thrilling attractions in exchange for their wallets. As a result, this has created a vast new market for parks and more importantly, manufacturers to please visitors and solve the main problem parks experience limitations. For the most part, parks are limited due to the financial limitations stemming from their capital investment plans, which depend on a variety of factors. Another limitation is due to being what is called landlocked, where parks have extremely limited space for new additions. This is where small, compact rides with a high thrill factor come into play. Headquartered in Florida, Skyline Attractions was founded in July of 2014 by former employees of Great Coasters International, Jeff Pike, Evan Soulier, and Chris Gray. During the inception of Skyline Attractions, the three set out to form their own attractions firm to bring their own steel coaster ideas to fruition. For the first few years, Skyline was ultimately obligated to make small kids' rides and writable arcade games to fund their future endeavors. After overhearing customer requests for thrill rides under $2 million, the team set out to surprise and dominate the otherwise untapped market of small family-owned parks on a budget. This is where the Skywarp comes in. While designing the concept in 2016, the Skyline crew wanted a small steel thrill coaster that would repeat the best parts of a coaster over and over again. From there, a dueling figure eight coaster consisting of two Immamans was conceived. While the ride was still in the design phase during the later half of 2016, the team took the idea to the IAPA Showcase, the International Association of Amusement Parks and Attractions. Here, Skyline competed for the attention of small and large customers with hundreds of other companies. After an initial ad in amusement park magazine Amusement Today, Skyline had caught a big fish, Six Flags. Having the interest in the idea of an inexpensive and compact thrill ride, Six Flags met with Skyline to discuss their interests and later re-met in March of 2017 to check in on the progress of their potential product. During that time, Skyline had built preliminary seats and components to show off to their client. As a result of their meetings with Six Flags, Skyline was connected with another manufacturer to create the track for their new ride. You might have heard of them, Rocky Mountain Construction? In the first contact, RMC was on board and willing to create a different run of their new single rail track to fit the needs of Skyline's new ride. With RMC on the project with them, Skyline has a strong product to offer Six Flags, and they took it. In July of 2017, Skyline announced to the world that the first Skywalk was sold to a park. While no one knew who had purchased one, it was only two months until Six Flags let it be known that they were installing the very first Skyline Skywarp at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom in Vallejo, California. The ride would take form in a small grass plot next to the park's prototype Premier Ride Skyrocket 2, and would be branded with DC Comics Harley Quinn guarding charcoal black supports and cherry red track. The ride has the rare feature of having a single rail track design that gives the ride a streamlined look while still having ridges to grip on with large wheels on top and small wheel bogies on the sides and underneath. Each segment of the track is designed to have a small straight section at either end to allow for the pieces to be bolted together. This feature allows the ride to be taken apart and inspected at will, unlike other uses of RMC's single rail technology. Supports for the ride are also designed to allow for ease of assembly for parks with limited time and budget for construction by having one support branch off to multiple connections. 
The train, much like the ride, is very unique. The term train is used here in the singular as the vehicle is one continuous train assembly that has two distinct rideable areas for guests. The entire train consists of 28 vertebrae-like folded steel segments that form the spine of the train. 18 of these segments are what are called dummy chassis and are not rideable due to the location in the train. They have small ball joints connecting each other and the dummy chassis have rungs for climbing during maintenance. The 10 rideable sections, 5 on each end, have floor plates welded on and fiberglass seats oriented face to face. As for the restraints, the design oriented from Skyline, but RMC supplied the all important hydraulic cylinders used to lock the restraints. Because of the ride's design, the ride lacks a lift hill and is instead propelled at certain points by traditional drive tires via a grip plate that spans the entire train, dummy chassis included. The drive tires are each driven by one 480 volt motor mounted to the underlying supports for the track. Each drive tire assembly is tensioned by a ratcheting tension spring that provides consistent traction for the drive tire. Despite the appearance, the ride also employs a chain hitching system on the side to manually move the train during maintenance by simply releasing the drive tire tension. The system is, therefore, not used in the actual ride cycle. The Skyline Skywarp installed at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom is a prototype attraction and features a very much prototype electronic setup. Live train control, like most other coasters, is only accessible in the station and is done via pickup rails mounted on two plates that flip upward to come in contact with the connections on the vehicle. These connections allow for the computer to give live feedback to the operator to ensure restraints are locked, which also allows the ride to be dispatched. This ride, like many others, does not know precisely what the train will do at every moment of the ride and what precise speed it will travel at. To track the train's exact location, the Skywarp's setup uses several proximity sensors along the course to not only know where the train is, but to use that data to control the drive tires accordingly. To know more precise positioning and speed, the ride employs two rotary enclosures fitted inside of two small rubber tires that roll next to the actual drive tires. One rotary encoder is located in each station for continuous data as the train will disengage from the tires one side at a time. These rotary encoders collect movement data which is fed in real time to the computer that controls the entire ride. The computer will then use that data to manipulate the drive tires to run the desired ride program. Due to their cost-effective design, the drive tires may grip the plates on the bottom of the train's spine and they are unable to move out of the way to not interfere with the ride. This is where the rotary encoders assist the ride in giving the roller coaster feel. The drive tires propel the train at the beginning of the cycle, but do not always contribute force to the train. Once the appropriate amount of force has accelerated the train, the drive tires move in a redundant manner where they use the real-time data from the rotary encoders to match the speed of the train, as to avoid being a resistive obstruction and therefore apply a net zero force on the train. When all these mechanical and electronic features are combined, the ride runs as such when dispatched. Upon dispatch, the pickup plates quickly move out of the way, severing communication with the train's electronics, and the motors switch on to first hold the train. The train begins to move back and forth, quickly gaining speed and momentum. Within 5-7 to seven passes, depending on load, the train has nearly enough momentum to complete the course, but is held to allow for hang time and the most amount of time to accelerate the train, giving it more than enough kinetic energy to complete the course multiple times. At this point, riders are set barreling and flipping around the course at 35 miles per hour with the flyby element and implements. As mentioned before, the rotary encoders are actively monitoring the train's speed to allow the drive tires to rotate at the same speed to create the net zero force on the train's grip plates since they cannot move out of the way. Since there are no brakes on the skywalk, the drive tires act as the mode of deceleration and as the cycle concludes, the rotary encoders work with the proximity sensor on the track to bring the train to a manageable speed and then begins the homing function. This is when you may notice the train moving back and forth in small bits in order to align with the proximity sensors. After this, the motor cease operation and the pickup plates flip back up to re-establish communication with the ride operator. From its inception and announcement, the Skyline Skywarp has had its legitimacy as a roller coaster questioned. While public consensus is still divided, there is somewhat a confirmation. Given the inclusion on the roller coaster database and the way in which the ride's mechanics move, it is safe to say the Skyline Skywarp is a coaster. With other power coasters that contact a grip plate at all times, the Skywarp surpasses this by having about 5 feet of complete coast alongside the behavior of the drive tires. This decision was made by the roller coaster database after a careful analysis, but we would love to hear what you think. Does the Skywarp qualify as a coaster to you and why? And should other parks install the Skywarp? I hope you've enjoyed this informational dive into the inner workings of the Skyline Skywarp. We make these videos to showcase the awe-inspiring engineering that goes into these rides. 
If you did enjoy this video, make sure to let us know by like, commenting, or first subscribing down below. Make sure to roll through our backlog of other How Does This Right Work videos, some of which you might like. There's a lot of them. We cover Six Flags, Cedar Fair, and everything in between. We make ride models, and our social media is linked below for real-time updates on the latest rides. Thank you for watching and subscribing. Welcome to Coaster Labs, and we'll see you in the